You know, so you want to get in the base jumping, huh? Okay, so you think you're you're gonna be better than Jeb Bush? Jeb Bush? Or any I'll of those? I'll always be better than Jeb Bush. Okay, so you've been you've been out of skydiving for what a decade? Now you're saying you want to get back into it, and um, but you want to go beyond skydiving, and you want to what do you call it? Uh, bat wing proximity flight proximity flying one it's of those be a few years down the road though yeah but so you one of those guys that flies right next to the mountains within a matter of feet sometimes inches you know the deal is though and for me to get back into the sport I, I have to hold on to the rig so I'll help you maintain it but I have to keep possession of it anytime Danny just listen to the deal hold on hold on just wait and when Danny wants to do it I'll be right there too with the rig I'll watch him do it but it's, I'll hold on to it like it's mine, even though it's yours. Wrong. I'll be holding on to it. That's just a deal. Well, that's not going to work. Well, that's your problem. But that's your problem, too, because now you, you don't have a buddy. You yeah, I a do. Friend, a jumping friend. Yeah, I do. You don't have another one. You don't have a spare one. I got plenty of buddies skydiving. The guys over there at Paris. But, yeah, I don't, I don't you know, I don't want to. It has to be my possession at all times. Oh, well, I'll just have to buy it. No, I mean, you can use it, but it has to be my possession. I'll just have to buy it. Yeah, okay. Well, anyways, so, you know those guys that proximity fly, life expectancy for them is average about two or three years, maybe four. That's not true. But that's not across that's, the board. Huh? What you should be more applying the mortality rate to is the percentage rate of death, which is 25% a year. So of the 200 to 250 jumpers per year that jump worldwide, you have... 25% of them dying, and then so you have new jumpers coming up, okay, taking their place, you know, doing their best to, to integrate into the, the packs, that, you know, the flocks that aren't burning in, and so then they work their way up and experience, and so then maybe the new jumpers who come along after them to fill the gaps of those who were so unfortunate to uh, uh -huh. fall in their dreams. Well, I'm just saying that's the numbers, that, that's the Become average. That 25%, so and you get further away from that 25%, the more experience you get. Or, on the, cut, on the flip side, you work your way closer to that, given the time. Who's to say what works for what and how it applies? Um, I'm sure it's your jump ability. Actually, you know, I think experience kills a lot of times. Yeah, it's the, it's the newbies that are if taking most caution. Low, getting down and dirty and enjoying the tree line. Yeah. Um, I just heard, like, when they were showing a base jumper in Switzerland or something, they were talking about base jumping and... They, they're the ones who use the term that life expectancy is, you know, two, three years, something like that, for active average, for, for active base jumpers. But you that know, can't apply to everyone. Okay, what I'm getting at is... Well, yeah, not everybody dies, but... That's right, so it's, it doesn't apply for everyone. Anyways, that, you know, dangerous sport. That can happen right I'm the exception. I am forever... Wait a minute, you don't believe in the No, I don't. So you can't see it. I'm never going to die. Okay, we're camping at Cold Brook Campground tonight. Check this out. Look, our campsite's right here. This is a paid campground. We decided to just... Oops. We decided to get a nice campground for the night. You can see a lot of nice mountains around here. And then down here, you got a creek and we're gonna go hiking tonight as always looking for bears and stuff um, check out a very nice creek down there right here let's see here right here you got a small little creek that comes out of this canyon right here this is a little little canyon right here it comes down right here and meets the bigger creek uh, right there yeah, right here <coughs> Shit. and it's just a nice campground look you got we got a nice little bench right there right next to the creek there's wild trout in here. 
And um, tonight, there's supposed to be rain tonight. The voices are coming from inside my head. I can hear them. I can hear them. Damn nut. Okay, so it's 80% chance rain by about 3 in the morning. It's going to be a, a brief rain shower, but it is in the forecast. Uh, we're not quite up at snow level, but... Let's see, it's a little blurry, isn't it? Right up there... You can see some snow. This damn thing was focused. So we're not far from snow. We are about five or six thousand feet high. It's probably going to get into the uh, probably um, well, it could get down to freezing tonight. And I say wherever there's a campground and people, because there are a few campers, which I'm kind of surprised about, there's always a better chance you're going to see a bear come through here looking for food. I've seen, I haven't seen bear here, but I have seen deer. And somebody reported a mountain lion sighting here about a year ago. And a bear sighting here last year. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, That's what we're drinking right now. And you know what, I got a little buzz going too. I hardly, I don't hardly drink anymore, but since I'm on a camping trip, I decided to buy this. Uh, you know, I used to buy the vodka, I used to buy the Bacardi, all the stuff that nowadays tastes like gasoline to me. Yeah, if you put this on Facebook, I want to put those pictures I took of you on Facebook. <laughs> this is um, YouTube. Oh, well, same thing. I used to buy all the hard, I used to drink a lot of hard liquor a long time ago. Um, boy, have I kind of grown out of that. I just don't like the taste of it. <laughs> huh? This guy lives here. But the fireball, for some reason, you know, it's potent enough, and it's about the only hard liquor I like. It just—it's easy to drink, and it's potent. And that's my liquor of choice. That's my poison of choice. Frank, I think, Sorry. I think we're gonna have to go whaling tonight. Do what? I think I think uh, there's a fish out of water that wants to get landed. <laughs> <laughs> Why is she looking over here? Well, there's a lady over there taking care of business. Where's the Where's the man? Is, is he out hunting for the dinner? Of course, I can't imagine she come out here by herself. So it looks entirely possible. I just love this little campground. Isn't it great? So after a little bit, we're gonna we'll get the tent set up and. I'm going for a hike up here, up down, up the creek. The creek goes that way. Uh, first, I may go this way though. This is the other creek that comes down here. Let's see what I can find up there. Later tonight, we'll be going hiking a ways. See what we can find. So, um, so you think the Freemasons control America? Huh? Or what? What why is do it? You ask? The secret society. You, that's. Well, why do you ask? Because you said something about the governor or something like that. But right? I'm always saying things like this. Huh? I was, we weren't talking about this right now. But since uh, since you're asking, uh, off the cuff, uh -huh. for the sake of the video, okay. No, I don't think the Freemasons control America. They control the world. Oh, they control the world. So even more so than the U.S. government. The U.S. government is a uh, is a figment. Hey, look at it. look at the beauty of this campground right here. This little stream comes right to where the picnic table is right there. Let me see. How about this? Yeah, until flash flood comes. <laughs> no, but I mean, this is the neatest campground. Look at our cars up there. Real nice campground. And then now we're. You take a hike up here a little ways. Check it out. Drink some beer. How about those Los Angeles Rams coming back to LA?
Okay, I believe, <coughs> looking at the maps, see the North Fork only goes so far up in the canyon, and I think it ends right here, because it, <coughs> because if I look at the map right, you got this little creek that comes out of here, to here, and then meets up with this creek, and that's where the North Fork starts, and I believe this is Soldier Creek that starts right here. But anyways, look at this. Since we had pretty good rain this year, uh, this is a pretty decent little creek. I'm gonna be going fishing on this uh, in the morning. Yeah. Let me go see if I can find a free Masons over here. Let's go see, man. Huh? Let me go find the next big huh? They're all be rocking down and killing. Take a breather. Turn it in the next move. Look at there's some deep pools here. Maybe there's some little trout hiding under these white washes. Oh, shit. There's a man with a gun over there. Telling me I have got to do well. I think it's time we stop. Hey, hey, what's that sound? Hey, little boy, look what's going down. Huh? All right, just checking out our surroundings uh, oh, oh, from our campsite. The deep little tiny brook.
Our campsite is right there. Okay, this is our meal for tonight. Bought the stove last time, went camping. And once again, I just made things simple. We're gonna just warm up this. Chicken Alfredo. This is actually the first time I've seen that in the Chef Boyardee brand. So, <coughs> you know, I like chicken Alfredo, so I bought this and we're just gonna warm this up. That get to be dinner for tonight. We are expecting rain, so I kind of waterproofed my tent with the Nexer tarp underneath aligned. <coughs> Have the wire extending the rain fly out to a little extra protection so it doesn't get on the seams. I think the most vulnerable part will be the front. Now, See this top does extend outward, but if the rain comes at an angle, it can still hit the sides. Um, so check it out. I'm gonna try this. I've never used this before. Gwen had it. It's Scotch Guard. Heavy duty water shield. So what I did was I sprayed this on the bottom seams and corners around the whole tent but, but mainly for the front so just in case water seeps through or I mean would have seeped through and, and well we'll see how this works maybe it'll protect it from getting drips in the corners and stuff but uh, now my buddy Glenn he went a different route he bought this today so one person uh, I don't know what you call it, some kind of a one person tent just big enough. You know, it's actually a pretty good amount of room for a sleep bag. You got a little room for the sleeping bag plus a little more. But it bought today's and we go with that. But I'll tell you if it rains hard tonight, which it could, because it's 80%, 85% by 3 o'clock in the morning. Well we'll see how these hold up with the rain. Well, it's actually kind of excited, it's exciting uh, to get rough weather when I'm out here. And who knows, it might snow. Uh, back down in town is already already getting in the upper 30s and we're 5,000 feet now, so we'll definitely be in the 30s tonight and uh, if maybe even colder than that if, if the storm comes through tonight. And I, we could definitely get a little snow, so. I just hope it doesn't snow so much to where we get stranded, but I don't think that will happen. Nevertheless, it needs to be said that if a man survives, it's because he was worthy of survival, and he has some good gift. Are you this sure? is a constant. Are you sure, though? This is an absolute constant. Everyone that died however, wasn't worthy? However evil uh, perception may have been against him, if he survived it, it's because he had a good gift. I kind of had that, I got a motorcycle wreck, a kid, uh... Ran stop sign, smashed me. It's 60. I broke my hip and came in two places, lifeline, everything. And I never saw the 
like the light that people say, whatever the third eye is. I've been in four accidents, four, four motorcycle accidents. Yeah, and four. sometimes I, uh, sometimes I think it's like, oh well, I don't, I don't know. Maybe it's just a numbers thing. Maybe that was my day. Typically, we would think that. Yeah. But otherwise, is what I presented. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. I'm, yeah. You're here. You're talking to me. Exactly. And you're talking to yeah. somebody who's you made me think been, about slided, it. been slated for elimination by the federal government for what I speak. So because you and I speak, it's because either the program presents accordingly so that they might want to know what else it is I'm ever willing to present, just to ever willing, ever willing to find out about me so they present you, or you are somebody like me. I believe that you're part of the federal alliance. Nevertheless, I'm still willing to learn by teaching. Yeah. How can I know if I don't have the comparison? I've got so many concepts and so many things of understanding. But that's limited without a comparison. I Nevertheless, I, I agree in that. Agree. So you say. So you say. No, everything is limited without a comparison. You have to be willing to lay your life down for the sake of truth. How do you know? You have to be willing to lay, lay your life down for the sake of truth. Or you were never true to yourself. I agree. Definitely. Yeah, but you never been left for dead. You never yeah. had you never had a fight for your life. You never had a war on this land where no where wars do not exist. They used to. Generally speaking. But yeah, that was in the old days. In, in chains and knives, and I've been there too, but I'm talking about after that. When when I thought we give it time. We'll see if it's okay. Just waking up right now. Glenn? Hi. Did you get any leaks last night? No. Glenn. Well, it did rain pretty good last night, like they said. Mm -hmm. As you can see up here, we're very close to the clouds, very misty. Wet. Had a good time around the campfire last night. Got a few beer cans all over the place. And it got pretty cold last night. Definitely in the 30s.